Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. And for those of you who are new here, hi, I'm Amy and this is Thrift Adventure. I'm a full-time reseller primarily on the Poshmark app, but I do dabble on other online platforms and I sell locally. Today I have another ship with me video. Uh, these vid or these items are sales from over the weekend, Saturday afternoon, Sunday, and Monday morning. Uh, you want to be sure to watch all the way to the end though because I share all of my sales throughout the week and I always have interesting and unique items and hopefully you can learn some new things to keep your eyes out for when you're out thrifting. Okay, so the first sale was on Cherish.com and it was just this cute little parakeet figurine. Uh, this sold for $50. I was pretty excited about that. I just picked it up because I thought it was cute and it was nicely made. I paid $3 for it, so after Cherish's fee and my cost of goods, that made my profit $37.10. If you're interested in learning more about selling on Cherish, I have the Cherish Seller's Guide linked in the description box below. It talks about everything you could want to know about selling on there. Some important things to know is that uh, they have a tiered fee structure. So your fee can be anywhere from 22 to 45% based on how many items you have for sale and whether or not you pay for a store subscription. So you want to be sure to uh, take a look at all of that. My fee is at 22% because I pay a $49 per month store subscription. So my profit was $37.10. I will package this up off camera. So I will move that out of the way. The next item that sold is this really pretty silver necklace with pearls, coin pearls. I'm pretty sure these are like a cultured freshwater pearls. I just thought this was a really pretty piece. And I actually got this out of a mystery box that I ordered on Poshmark. Now I'm not a big mystery box type person, but this seller, uh, I follow her closet because she always has really pretty and unique jewelry pieces. And she put up some mystery jewelry boxes or yeah. And she labeled them as craft jewelry and she put some wearable mismatched earrings. And uh, the box was amazing. First off, I ordered one for $25. I think that's what this one, this came out of. And I got, I don't know, at least 30 pieces of sellable jewelry. So I paid less than a dollar a piece for those. And this was sterling silver. Quite a few of them were sterling silver necklaces and earrings. So it was really a great deal. I went back and ordered the second box that she had listed. And I think I ended up paying $35 with free shipping on that one. And it also had a ton of stuff in it. So I haven't got around to listing that yet, but um, it was really fun to go through. My husband even got into it. I dumped it out on the kitchen or the dining room table and we went through and sorted stuff. Okay, so that sold for $28. I paid a less than a dollar for it. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $21.40, which almost covers the cost of that whole box, which is really exciting. Okay, the next item that sold is a, another item that I bought kind of experimenting with retail arbitrage. I kind of got obsessed with this Kurt Geiger brand uh, at the beginning of the year or the end of last year, I can't remember. And uh, I ordered some pieces for myself and then I found some different places that you could buy discounted bags. And so I ordered some to test out some retail arbitrage. A few of the pieces, it has gone well. This piece didn't work out that well. I did make a profit. It sold for $225. I had paid 100, it was 139 plus tax. So $152 for this. So that seems decent, but then when you take posh fees away, it's not so good. I only had a profit of $20 on this and it did take a couple of months to sell. So if I could find, I'm gonna package this up off camera because I wanna add some additional um, bubble wrap. But I think if you can find you know, his bags more in the 
60 to $80 range, then you may have some you know, better results with reselling them for a profit. I did buy one for 60 and sell it for 169, I think. So I ended up doubling my money. So that worked out. Uh, but you know, live and learn. I have one more uh, bag that's kind of similar to that that I bought to resell that hasn't sold yet. Uh, so I don't think I will be doing that again, but it was kind of fun to get the boxes in the mail and experiment with that. So the next item that sold is this Eileen Fisher 100% cashmere beautiful drape front cardigan sweater. It was new with tags, size extra large. I picked this up at the Goodwill. I stumbled upon one day uh, where the new rack had a ton of new with tags and like new cashmere pieces in size large, extra large and 1X. It was a really wonderful day. This was one of the pieces. It ended up selling for $55. It didn't take a super long time to sell. Maybe I could have waited for a little bit higher price than that, but Eileen Fisher just is not always a super great brand for me. I think I just don't know which are the right pieces to pick up. This did end up being, you know, $55 is great because I paid... What did I pay? Uh, $7 for it. But, you know, compared to the retail price, I think the retail price was like $178 or something. $55 does not seem that great, but it is the summer of sales after all. And so I am accepting reasonable offers. I thought that was reasonable, especially since we are going into summer. And I'm just motivated to sell stuff. So the pearl necklace I sold uh, on offer to, I originally had that listed, I think, for 36. Uh, the parakeet figurine was also on offer. I had that listed for 69, and they offered me that 50. Uh, but the Kirk Geiger bag, I had it priced at 225 but I had originally had it priced for 275 I reduced it to 250 and a couple of weeks later I reduced it to 225 and when I reduced it to that then it sold for the full asking price okay so this sold for 55 I paid seven so that made my profit $34.98 I think that is just fine not a very busy weekend for me, it's possible that that case that or the return that I had last week is affecting my sales. It's hard to tell. Um, April last year was a slower month for me as well. Like we, I may be starting to get into my summer slowdown, which I'm really trying to avoid, but uh, we can't control everything. So uh, something that I always want to mention and I don't always remember to say is that um, I do have quite a bit of knowledge, but I do not consider myself an expert in anything. And everything I share is for, you know, Edu educational and entertainment purposes and I don't know everything about everything and sometimes I do make mistakes so I highly encourage you to always do your own research on items also if you're enjoying my videos and you haven't subscribed yet I would love it if would if you would subscribe I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2024 and I would love it if you would help me out with that also if you could give this video a thumbs up and comment down below both those things really help me out okay don't go anywhere where I will be back in a jiffy to share what else I sell this week. Hey again, it's Wednesday and it's been a pretty decent couple of days. I had a good sale on Cherish and it is a pair of these vintage cloisonne vases. And I picked these up because I liked the color combo on them. As I've mentioned before, cloisonne is very hit or miss for me. I am really not that knowledgeable on it, so uh, I just pick it up for the decorative value. Some There are is some older cloisonne that is very valuable and some that's not so old, maybe from, you know, like the 60s, 70s, and 80s, which isn't as valuable. And unfortunately, I can't tell you the difference, but this pair of vases sold for $200. One of them did have this crack on the bottom, which of course I did mention. 
Uh, I only paid $5 for the pair of these. I also charged a $8 packaging fee, which is in addition to the shipping fee and the buyer pays both. So that made my total sales price $208. So after Cherish's fee and my cost of goods, that made my profit $159. I am thrilled with that. I just really liked the colors on these, like I said. I thought they were a nice size. They took probably around six months to sell, so I don't think that is terrible for $159 profit. I'll go ahead and package these up off camera, so I'll move them out of the way. Okay, let's see. The next item that sold is a Patricia Nash necklace. This is, I have two pieces from the $890 thrift haul that I got. So that is turning out to be so amazing. Such an amazing buy. Uh, this necklace only sold for $22, but that's fine. I didn't really anticipate that the Patricia Nash items would sell for a ton. This is her little logo here, and it's just a silver tone. Uh, they called it a locket on the website because you could put a little picture in there, but as you can see, it's not like attached together or anything. The jewelry at that estate sale was $3 a piece. So that is why I just went hog wild and picked up tons of stuff because, you know, I knew even these costume jewelry pieces that I could sell them for decent prices. So, you know, even if I sell them for $20, that is still a pretty okay profit. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $11.62. It looks like this actually was $22 with discounted shipping. So that's what made my uh, profit go down a little bit. But I'm just fine with that, you know, Patricia Nash, I think I've mentioned it before, is kind of hit or miss. She has, her stuff has a pretty decent retail value or retail price, but the resale price isn't always, you know, matched to that. So I am happy to, you know, get reasonable prices for her stuff and, uh, you know, hold out for higher prices on some of the other items. Let's see, I am going to use the padded flat rate envelope for this, um, this sale. Okay, and the next item that sold is this really great belt and it is metal and black leather and it has this beautiful rose detail on it. Now I really anticipated that this would sell, sell quicker because I thought it was so cool, uh, but that's okay. It ended up selling for, this just sold, so I forgot to get my label, uh, for $36. I think it had discounted shipping. I'm pretty happy with that. I kind of priced this a little bit higher because I thought it was so unique. Let's see, what do I wanna do here with this? I don't really think this is terribly fragile, but I don't want it to get all scratched up in transit or anything. I only paid about $3 for this. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $23.78. I'm really happy with that. You know, I might actually add some bubble wrap to this but I will do that after we get done here. So I was pretty happy with that. Oh, before I forget, um, so when my last video uploaded, which would have been two or three weeks ago, um, I've gotten quite a few questions about my inventory system and my inventory software. I'm sorry, I'm not the person to give advice on this. I am not super organized with my records. And as I have mentioned before, I use the cash method for accounting. So I don't have to have an exact inventory method or record for my tax purposes. So I use a simple Excel spreadsheet. I also use stickers on my items so um, or tags. 
So I'll write what I paid for it and how much I'm asking for in my, you know, retail portion of my store so that I have a record of how much I paid for it. It's not perfect. Um, if you do, I don't know what the other um, tax method is called. So the cash method, you write off your cost of goods for your inventory purchased in the year you purchase it, not in the year you sell it. This is kind of a gray area for some accountants or CPAs. So I would recommend that you talk to your accountant and see what they uh, recommend. My accountant seems to think it's just fine to be doing this. I have been doing it this way for over 12 years, knock on wood, and I haven't had any problems. Uh, so that's how I do it. I'm sorry that I can't be more help, helpful with some sort of inventory tracking suggestion. I'm just not the person to ask for that. Okay, so I thought I'd cover that because I figured since I had a few questions, I might get more questions about that. Okay, the next item that sold is this black wo woven leather belt. And I do well with these simple woven leather belts. And in fact, this buyer purchased a brown woven leather belt initially, and she had liked this one too. And I think that was yesterday that she purchased it. And this morning she messaged me and asked me if she could get this black one instead of the brown one. So I said, yes, I will just ship this instead. Now this may be a little bit of a risk to do that, uh, but I did, use all of the communication through the you know message to buyer function and i uh, took screenshots of the the picture of this belt and the description of this belt and said please confirm here that this is the belt that you want instead and i will ship it instead and she said yes so hopefully there is no problems but i didn't want to cancel the sale and then um, do a new sale. This sold for $20. I only paid about a dollar for this. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $15. So I recently uploaded uh, my thrifting in Arizona and I got so many belts there. And I just kind of wanted to reiterate that me getting those 20 or 30 belts, if I make 10 to $15 a piece on 20 belts, so that is between two and $300 in potential profit just from belts. So uh, that, again, that's something that you can keep your eyes out for when you are traveling because they pack up easily. You can shove, you know, shove them inside shoes and handbags and, uh, they're not necessarily super heavy or breakable. So that's some way that you can offset when you're traveling. Okay, the next item that sold is this kind of fun, funky hat. And this is wool and the brand is Deluxe. I just picked it up because I thought it was fun and funky. And I was at a fill the bag sale and I was trying to you know, increase the number of items that I got there to decrease my average cost of goods. And I've kind of talked a little bit about that recently that I am going to reevaluate whether I want to continue to do that or not. You know, pick up these lower priced items. This sold for $20. I paid about a dollar for it. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that gave me a profit of $15, which is pretty, it's pretty great for, you know, that type of investment. But because I have access to so much inventory, I already have so much inventory. Do I really want to be um, getting more inventory, you know? I think I should be focusing on listing my items that have higher value and higher profit margins than lower profit margin items. I, you know, I don't know. That's just what I think. Maybe a lot of people sell more 20 to $30 items 
uh, and they are very successful doing that. And so, you know, it's hard, it's hard for me to know, but I would personally, I'd rather sell $100 item with say a 60 to $80 profit than sell four $20 items with 15, you know, 10, $15 profit each. That's just me. I don't, love listing stuff. I'd rather buy stuff. So I really need to be more strategic about what I'm picking up. Let's see, did I get, I did not get a envelope for this. I don't know. I just, you know, I'm always looking and trying to reevaluate, reevaluate my business to make sure that I am you know, doing it the best way that works for me and my personality. Okay, so the next item that sold is another item from the $890 estate sale haul. Uh, if I haven't already mentioned it, I'll try and remember to link that in the description box. It is one of these Anushka purses. I had never heard of this brand before, but when I saw these, I just thought they were extremely unique and they were at this estate sale for $15 a piece. So I uh, did a quick search for them and saw that the retail price is very high on these. So this bag probably retailed between two and $300. So I decided to go ahead and pick them up. I think I picked up maybe six or so of them. I've already sold one and it sold for $188. This one sold for 66. The other one was um, new with tags and dust bag. And I think it was probably the most desirable print out of all of them. This one was pre-owned, like I said, and it did have a little bit of wear. Uh, nothing major, you know, still would look good when being carried. Oh, and one of you purchased this. So thank you so much, Lindsay, for supporting my resale business and my YouTube channel. I just so appreciate all of you guys. Okay, so it sold for 66, I paid 15. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $35.98. So as I, I don't know if I mentioned it in this video, but I have already made all of the money back that I spent at that sale. So everything that I have left is pure profit, which is super exciting. Uh, and I would guess I have at least 150 items left to sell. Super, super exciting. Okay, so the last item for today I am so excited to sell because I have had this minimum two years, maybe over three years. And it is this Rebecca Taylor dress. I just thought this was super cute. It's kind of a knit thicker scuba material. It is uh, one of her older tags, I believe. And you can see it does have a little mark on the tag there. But on the inside, it still had, what did it have here? Still had this attached. So this is potentially new without tags. I don't know why it took so long to sell. I don't think I had it priced outrageously. Maybe I did. It ended up selling for $31. I think uh, this also had discounted shipping on it. I had paid $8 for it because I thought that this was a uh, more expensive brand, which I think it is, but just because an item is a more expensive brand does not mean that it will resell for a high price. I have learned this many times over and over again, and I think I'm getting better at you know, trying to look up the actual item and not just focus on the brand name. So after posh fees and my cost of goods and any shipping discounts that made my profit $13.82. Really, really not worth waiting two or three years, uh, but I hope the buyer likes it and I am so happy to see this go. 
Okay, that is it for today, but I did send out 20% off offers using my Posher VA on everything in my closet. So hopefully that will result in some sales. Uh, I will share what else I sell the rest of the week, but I did hopefully real quickly, you know, that's hard for me, wanna talk about photos in your listings and how I think that that can, having good photos can increase the price that you are able to sell your items for. So I wanna give you a couple of tips. I've had a few of you comment on, you know, Poshmark and you know say hi and that you watch my videos and so I have gone and snooped around in your closets I'm not going to say anyone's name or anything but some people I have noticed that their photos are a little bit dark uh, also that they may have clutter in the background or like a printed background uh, some people I, I've noticed who sell jewelry, the jewelry is photographed kind of far away. So those are things that you want to avoid. You want to have a clean white background if possible. I use the Photo Room Out app to white out the background of my first photo. If you don't want to do that, you can just buy a white poster bo board from the dollar store and use that to photograph on so that you have a clean, plain background. Um, also, you want to, uh, if you photograph using your phone, you want to set it to the square shape. I think it says one by one or four by four. I can't remember for sure. Then you know that it will fit in the frame. Um, on Poshmark and you can zoom in. So I would zoom in as much as possible uh, while still showing your full item in the frame. You can also use the photo editing features on your phone. I'm sorry, I am not savvy enough on editing uh, for YouTube to show you how to do that through a video. I'm sorry, I'm just not that savvy yet. Um, but there is an option you could look, you could Google it or, you know, there may even be a YouTube video that says how to edit your photos using your iPhone or Android or whatever you have. Uh, but there are functions on there where you can use the exposure and brightness and brighten up your photos so that people can really clearly see your item. The reason that this is so important, especially as reselling gets more and more competitive, is that let's say that someone is searching for um, a free people top and free people sweater, and they are scrolling through the hundreds and hundreds of available listings. And your photo, your first photo is dark with a cluttered background. Maybe your item is shown far away. When they're scrolling through all of those options, they're not gonna click on yours because they can't clearly see it on their phone or on their computer. Um, so they're gonna be less likely to click on your item, uh, even if it is shown to them. So that is why I think that clear, crisp photos with a simple background are so important. The other reason that a simple background is important is because if someone is using Google Lens to search for an item, so let's say they had an item that they love and it worn, it's worn out and they're using Google Lens to search using an image. If you have a cluttered background, Google Lens probably will not find your image on Poshmark and show it to them as a result. Whereas if you have a white background and a clear image, your listing could be shown to a buyer who is searching through Google. So that is very important to take some extra time to edit your photos. I always have my closet linked in the description box below so you can go take a look at what I'm talking about with how I do my photos. My photos aren't perfect. I'm not saying that they need to be perfect, but that first image is the most important. So if you can take the time to edit that image, that is going to give you the best bang for your buck. So I hope that was helpful. Don't go anywhere. I will be right back to share with us I sell this week.
Hey again, it's Thursday the next day and I had a sale on Cherish that I don't think I will have time to package up and ship out on Friday and I want to get it out before the weekend so I thought I would share what else I sold in the last 24 hours. So it was, I only had three sales but they were three pretty good ones so I'm pretty excited to share. So this is the item that sold on Cherish. It is a mid-century probably 1950s or 1960s, what they call a wall pocket. So it is made out of ceramic and then it has this pocket in the top. And so what people would do, this would probably have been in someone's bathroom and then they would put, you know, fake flowers or real flowers or other decorations in this and hang it on the wall. Typically there would be two or three of them in varying sizes. Um, sometimes there may have just been one, but these are quite collectible. This one sold for $160 plus a $6 packaging fee. And if you go on eBay and look at sold comps, there are even higher comps for this type of thing. I'm not sure if there are specific brands that are more collectible than others, uh, but when I saw this at the Goodwill for $3, I reached out and grabbed it real quick. It has this really pretty kind of iridescent sheen to it. This did take a little while to sell. Um, maybe four to six months, I can't remember exactly, uh, but I felt like it was worth the wait to get that price of $166. I'm really excited. I will finish packaging this up off camera, but I wanted to get a little protection on it before I move it out of the way. Like I said, I paid $3 for this. So after Cherish's fee and my cost of goods, that made my profit $127.80. I am thrilled with that. Another really great sale is this pair of real gold little hoop earrings. I'll just do one. As you can see, they are pretty dainty, dainty but they are kind of wide and chunky. So I used... Uh, words like chunky, chubby, uh, maybe I didn't say chubby, <laughs> huggy. Uh, so when they're short and they hug, you know, the lobe of your ear, people call them huggy hoop earrings. And, you know, I put 14 karat gold in the title and these sold for $169. I am thrilled with that. Uh, these were one of the items that I picked up at that uh, estate sale where I spent $890. Uh, this is turning out to be just simply amazing. I only listed these a couple of weeks ago, maybe. So that was a wonderful quick sale. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, I think this had discounted shipping. My profit was $132.20. So that is really, really wonderful to have two over $160 sales with over $100 in profit. Now that is the kind of sale that I want to have <laughs> every day that would wouldn't that be great having multiple of those every day okay so the next item i'm hopeful oh so um i'll try not to talk too long about this but i have a buyer who bought made an offer on something it was a vintage hawaii hat so i think last week i accepted the offer and i shipped it and then she requested to cancel it. And I told her it had already been shipped and that she was welcome to use my photos if she wanted to resell it. It's only a $20 sale. Um, so it's not, you know, a big amount of money or anything. Um, but she returned it to sender. I haven't received it back yet, but she notified Posh. I don't know what she said to Posh via email, but their email, uh, made it sound like she said it was lost. I, I don't know. Um, and then she, so she had said, when I told her that I had already shipped it, she said, oh, don't worry, I'll just return it to sender. And I just ignored her because I think 
that can get you kicked off the platform. I'm not sure, maybe not. Posh seems to, oh, I'm wrapping this up and not even showing it to you. Posh seems to let people get away with stuff these days. Uh, but so she had Poshmark join our chat and told them that she returned it to send, sender. And so the uh, Poshmark representative just said, Amy, once you get the item back, let me know and I'll tell you how to proceed. So that's just, and she's a, a seller too. She's not a, a big seller, but she's probably got 20 or 30 items to where I think she would know how this, you know, how the return process works. So, um, you know, I just don't, I don't think she should be allowed to do that because it's not following the rules. So I don't think she should, she should get her money back. Whether I get the item back or not, I don't think she should because I think she's aware of what she's doing. That's just my opinion. I could be wrong. Um, so I responded and said, thank you for joining the chat to the Poshmark representative. And then I said, this is not the correct way for the buyer to handle a return. I put a screenshot of the Poshmark policy saying that uh, sales are final that are made on offer and you cannot cancel them once they've been shipped. And um, yeah, that, that's it. And I said, this is not the correct way for the buyer to handle a return. So that was right before I started uh, filming. So we'll see what they say. Um, but that's just frustrating. I don't like when people act like the rules don't apply to them. Mostly that's what I don't like. It's really not about the money at all. Um, Cause what was it? $16 or something like that. It's just that, you know, if there's rules in place, everybody should have the same rules. That's it. Okay, so. The next item that sold is this silver tone bracelet, and it is stamped 925, which would indicate that it was sterling silver. However, it is, I don't think it is solid sterling silver. Maybe it's silver plated uh, because when I put a magnet to it, the you know, it clings to the, the magnet. So that's one way that you can tell. Um, it's a quick test. It's not foolproof, but it's a quick test to tell if an item is sterling, silver, or gold, um, and more to test that it's not metal. So this was magnetic. So it either has, you know, like a higher content of nickel or some other metal besides silver because silver won't be magnetic. Now, sometimes the clasps on a real gold or real silver item will have metal in the clasp and the clasp will have a slight pull. Um, but if you check on other areas of the item, it shouldn't. Anyways, I put that all in my listing that it was stamped 925, but that it was magnetic. So I didn't think that it was fully silver. Um, it sold for $36. I hope the buyer, you know, read that and I don't have a problem with that. I paid $5 for this because at the time I thought it was sterling because it had that stamp, but then I discovered that it was not. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $21.78. Uh, so I haven't, I've had a couple of problems on Poshmark in the last few weeks, more than I normally do, but really out of, I've probably had almost 4,000 sales and I have had less than 20 returns or issues. I've only had one buyer legitimately try and scam me on Poshmark where they, uh, bought something and then claimed that they received something completely different that was, it was jewelry and they claimed to have gotten junk jewelry. And the sale was for like $90 and then they sent me back junk jewelry. And uh, come to find out later, the same buyer had scammed multiple other people. So somebody posted about it in a Poshmark group on Facebook and multiple people popped up and said that she had scammed them. So when I received my return back on that one, I filed a counterclaim with Poshmark and let them know that um, I had indeed shipped the correct item and that they can look at my, you know, seller history. This was a year or year and a half ago, 
maybe two years ago. Um, but I still had, I had sold thousands of items and I have a very good um, reputation on Poshmark, of course. So they re they released my money, but apparently they let her continue to buy on there because it was almost a year later that I saw this on um, Facebook that she had scammed someone else. So this is not to say that you're gonna get scammed when you sell on Poshmark. These types of things happen very, very little, not very often, um, but you know, they can happen. So you just have to be aware. It is part of the business of selling online. Hopefully it doesn't happen to me anymore. So I was thinking last night as I was going to sleep that there was something I forgot to mention about uh, taking photos for Poshmark. And now for the life of me, I cannot remember what that was. So if you think of something that I missed that I didn't mention in a, you know what to do to have good photos, please put it in the comments below this video. A lot of people read those comments and um, we all can learn from each other and it's just really great to do that. So I will be back, so it's Thursday. As long as I have more sales, I'll be back on Saturday to share what else I sell. I'll see you then. Hi again, it's Saturday and I sold nothing else on Poshmark the last couple of days. So uh, maybe that case is affecting my sales. Maybe this weird return situation, I'm not sure, but I did have a sale on Cherish. So I'll share that and then I'll talk about the outcome of that buyer returning the, doing return to sender on that item I sold. So this item sold on Cherish and it is a vintage cheese tray, a hostess server. I think I put condiments, all sorts of stuff. Still had the tag attached to it. And this little knife has a magnetic holder on there. Just a really fun, cute little piece. This sold for $92 plus a $5 packaging fee, so a total of $97. $97! I can't believe it. I paid two bucks for this at an estate sale. So again, this is something that you could keep your eyes out for, or at a yard sale actually, at yard sales, because people probably aren't going to mark these up that high. Maybe in your area they will, uh, but I was really excited. This is marked Japan Hand Carved Hardwood. So I have had this forever, uh, but it has only been listed, well, it's probably been listed six or eight months. So it did take a while to get that price, but I think that's worth it. It didn't take up much space. I didn't pay much for it. So after Cherish's fee and my cost of goods, that made my profit $74.76. I'm thrilled with that. I'm going to package that up off camera. Okay, so for the buyer who just did return to sender on that item that they bought. So in the conversation that the Poshmark representative had joined, I said, this is not the proper way for a buyer to initiate a return. Uh, this sale was made through off an offer. I accepted it and I shipped it. So according to Poshmark's uh, rules, this should be a final sale. So I put something to that effect as a response in the Poshmark combo. Then that Poshmark re representative said, I'm sorry for this inconvenience. I am escalating your issue to another member and they will contact you via email. So I didn't hear for 24 hours, so I added another comment to the conversation. Sorry, I can't, I can't spit it out here. And said, it is not my responsibility that the buyer uh, initiate or returned the item outside of Poshmark's terms of service. Please release my funds. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Then today I got an email from Poshmark saying, uh, because the buyer returned the item outside of our processes, I have released your funds. Once you get the item back, you are welcome to relist it. So all's well that ends well. I would say if you have something like this that you don't want to accept as a return, you stay firm and uh, say, you know, tell Poshmark that the buyer is in the wrong and they are, you know, not doing things according to the rules. 
most, again, it was not about the money because I think my payout was only like 16 or $20 on this. To me, it is about the buyer just being like, the rules don't apply to me and I'm going to return it to sender so I can get my money back. I think they did get their money back too because my, uh, in my history, it said that the sale was canceled. So that would indicate to me that they, you know, got their money back. But my point is, is that they need to follow the correct processes. That's what I do as a seller. And I think that that is the right and fair way to do things. Okay, so my sales for the week were, okay, they were pretty good. Uh, total sales was $1,229. My total cost of goods was $211, a little bit higher because I had that retail arbitrage purchase. And then my total profit after fees, cost of goods, and any shipping discounts was $745.02. I'm happy with that. I am, I, I've been saying this and I say things over and over again and then I don't do it, but I think I'm talking as much to myself as I am to you guys. But I do really feel like I wanna lean more into Cherish, even though the fees are higher there. I just feel like if I could get even more listings on there, I have about 450 right now. If I could get even more listings on there, I really could be making a better amount each month on there. And um, yeah, I just feel like they have a good buyer and I have a lot of, you know, home decor and that type of things that I could have listed on there. So hopefully, knock on wood if that's the right thing, hopefully I get my Heinean gear and I do that. So thank you so very much for watching. As always, if you haven't already subscribed, I would love it if you would do that and give this video a thumbs up. I will see you all next week. As requested, here's a little appearance from T-Bird. I wanted to show you how she likes to play on the couch with the blanket. So here you go. She doesn't really look like she's having fun, but she is. See y'all next week. <laughs>